have it wrong. Problem. It went like this. Yeah, it sounds really bad I because I don't. I gotta write this down. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds really bad because like I I was more focused on kind of like getting a picture of it than I wasn't actually like kind of looking at it. So that's my fault. Whoa, what's this? I'm not Iris anymore. I'm just Olivia Kennedy of Dicebreaker. <laughs> wow, that seems like a really fun actual play show. Wouldn't it be great to make your own? Well, now you can. You always could, but. Now I'm gonna help you do that. Everyone deserves to make their own actual play show if they want to. Sometimes you have the urge to be creative. Sometimes you feel your RPG play is too good for others to miss out on. And sometimes you just want to do something fun with your friends. Whatever the reason, you don't have to go back and forth on whether or not you should make your own show. I'm here to tell you that those little goblins squeaking into your ear and telling you no are wrong. Actual plays are a lot of fun for people involved. They bring people together and they give you a wealth of video production experience, which I hear is pretty useful. Back to the actual topic of actual plays. This video is going to be exactly what I would have wanted to have as a resource when I was first getting into creating content online and playing RPGs. Combining those into one thing can be daunting at first, but there are several avenues for you to go down if you want to give it a go. If you're new to Dicebreaker, the channel you're currently watching, not only do we give you content on all things tabletop, but we have our own actual play show on the channel called Story Breakers. In my explanation on how you can make your own show, I'll be bringing up our experience of putting it together, as well as how you can take what we learned in the process and apply it to your own actual play journey. It's about time we dive straight into it. Here's how to start your own actual play show. There are three, maybe four, actual play formats that you can look into, but I'll preface this by saying that only a few of these are feasible. Podcasting, streaming, videos on demand, and live shows. If this is your first time venturing into the world of making an actual play show, I'm going to be straight with you immediately and encourage you to record remotely and have everyone be in charge of their own setup. It's likely that you're going to be heading up the behind the scenes stuff of setting up streams and podcast feeds and all of that stuff. And so having people involved who at least have a modicum of understanding surrounding video production would be ideal. Although people are very likely to gravitate towards other people with similar interests. So whether it's online or offline, I imagine you have a few people in mind if you're debating on creating your own actual play show. Live shows are usually something you're able to put on after you've established yourselves as an actual play show, or if you have some kind of in with a performance space. So we're going to table that option in this case. However, if you want to know how you could go about creating and setting up a live show, that could always be a follow-up video. So just let us know and we will make the thing. <laughs> you might think podcasting is the easiest option as there's no video production involved. And while that may be a plus, there are a lot of other challenges you might not have considered. Like the fact that you have to put your podcast out there on listening platforms you have to pay for. Podcast hosting platforms like RSS allow you to upload your episodes, but at a cost that can be paid monthly or annually. Whereas video platforms like YouTube or streaming platforms like Twitch allow you to place your content in front of an audience for free. You could even pop your audio podcast onto YouTube alone if you wanted to. With this being the case, streaming or making videos for YouTube is a great place to start. If you want to go for an in-person setup, then don't worry, we have you covered. And you can check that out later on in the video. There are chapters below if you'd like to skip to that part now. If you're adapting an already existing game into a show, then you'll likely have a few people you're thinking of asking to be involved in this. This is great in terms of chemistry between all of you, but it may not be smooth sailing if you don't have the equipment you need. There's also the fact that as far as the idea might be to you, there may be people in your group who don't particularly want to be in the spotlight. They might just want to play a fun game with their friends and not be scrutinized about it. If that is the case, you can't badger them into it. This is an experience that is meant to be fun and that means everyone needs to have fun. It may be better to put some kind of casting call out on your social media of choice to get people in who are eager to be a part of an actual play. However, compensating people for their time is important. Be upfront with people about whether or not this will be a paid venture. If you can't pay people now, then maybe you'll be able to down the line. Top tip, it's best to pay your GM a little bit more than the players. They put in a lot of work to make the story and that shouldn't be taken for granted. Ignore the shadow here, don't worry about that. 
All right, the equipment I'm going to list here is the basic equipment you'll need to start, as well as the flashier options you could go for if you have the money or if you want to work your way up to some better stuff. The basic equipment isn't flashy stuff, it's what a lot of people start off with. I'm also assuming you have some kind of PC or laptop, so I hope you do. <laughs> A USB mic like this is great because you can plug it in and go. You don't need to have an audio interface. That's expensive mic territory. So it's a great fit for newbies to actual play. It's an upgrade from an inbuilt mic on your laptop for sure. For goodness sake, please don't use an inbuilt mic. <laughs> You'll need some kind of camera if you want to be seen. <laughs> Duh, I know. So we recommend something like the Logitech C270 HD webcam. It doesn't blow you away with crispness, but it's reliable and does the job. Time for some higher quality equipment. This is one of the best mics on the market for podcasting, vocals, streaming, whatever you need. The quality of your audio will increase massively if you invest in one of these, but invest is the right word as it's a bit pricey. Bear in mind that you'll also need an audio interface to go along with this. It means you can plug your XLR microphone cable into that and then plug that into your PC using a USB cable. For that, any audio interface will do, but I've had my PreSonus Studio Audio interface for several years now and it's been reliable the whole time. OBS, Open Broadcasting Software. This is free and we here at Dicebreaker use it all the time not sponsored. <laughs> this will allow you to record you and all your friends as you play, Zoom or any communication site. This will allow you to have a video call with your friends and then place everyone in a frame right there in OBS. Don't worry if you'd rather do some post-production editing and sort that out later, you definitely can. Audacity. Also free! <laughs> This is something that all of the party should have installed on their PCs. It allows you to record your voice separately to the voice call you're on, allowing you to pick up any missing bits that might not have come through perfectly on the call. You don't want any robot voices messing up your actual play show, do you? Unless you're all playing robots for some reason, which would actually be pretty cool. So, you know, a way to send files to each other. Something like WeTransfer is great for this, but if people's files get too big, you might have a problem. If they're just sending audio, then that should be fine. There's also solutions like Dropbox or Google Drive, and those are the main things you'll need to get started. Apart from sitting down with your friends and having a great time, there are some other things you'll need to remember when you're sitting down for your first recording session. Make sure you do a sync clap if you're going to be editing this video later on. All that is, is one of you counting down from three and then clapping once in time with everyone else. Like this, three, two, one. If you're recording with OBS, triple check everything is working and recording and that all your export settings are correct. Something that you'll need to edit these videos down is editing software, which can be pretty intuitive, but it's certainly pricey. Adobe Premiere Pro is a safe bet, but it's ridiculously priced. There are a few alternatives to it, but they can be quite simplistic. We'll link a really handy video that breaks down those alternatives below. Now let's talk about streaming. You'll need to be logged into Twitch, YouTube, or whatever streaming platform you wanna use, and you'll need to link your stream key to OBS, which you can find in your settings. This is a private key that's personalized to you and that you should not share. <laughs> Otherwise, people like me could take over your channel and stream wild stuff like board game content. <laughs> but for real, keep those details to yourself. So you've sat down on a call, gotten everyone to record their own feed and sync clapped? Great. Something that you can think about now is audio mixing. Making sure that no one is too loud or too soft or adding in sound for ambience. For example, maybe your GM says, a noble count draws his horse and carriage up beside your party. <laughs> See how immersive and lovely that was? It's like you were there. You're going to have to make social media accounts for your new actual play show even if it's just one, because networking with other creators is one of the only ways to get your name and actual play out there. If you just plonk your actual play onto YouTube or Twitch, there's not much there to draw people into it. We recommend the Cursed Bird app and TikTok to promote the show because everyone is on Twitter and TikTok is made to show new content to users and that new content could be a fun clip from your actual play show. I want someone who watches this to set up their actual play show and for it to go viral and reach critical role and dimension 20 levels of acclaim, but that is a very high bar to set for yourself. Actual plays are a ton of fun, but there's a lot of them out there, which is why I want your main objective for your show not to be fame or money, but just to have fun. If people can see you having fun, it draws in people who want to have fun with you. 
for example, Story Breakers, our actual play show, we don't sit down and say, oh, we have to do another Story Breakers recording session. We're always really excited to sit down and play. We have a laugh, we make a day of it, we play characters we love, and we plan with our DM wheels, and it makes it a blast. That, along with consistency, eventually gets you an audience. Even if that happens to be only a few people every week, that's still wonderful. Okay, if you've gotten to this point, I suppose you're looking for something a little more advanced than a remote actual play show. If you're thinking of doing it in person, <laughs> we can help with that. I know we're obviously doing that at the moment with Story Breakers, but it isn't a walk in the park by any means. <laughs> I'll give you the breakdown on exactly how we devised and produced Story Breakers. First of all, we made a world specifically for this actual play and brainstormed ideas. Fun fact, we were initially torn on who should GM, myself or Wheels. We eventually decided on Wheels because I have so much fun as a player and Wheels has more fun as a GM and like I said, that should be your main focus. Then we spoke about which TTRPG system we wanted to use. We eventually settled on D&D because, honestly, it's popular and it's flexible. Story Breakers isn't exactly a classic D&D setting. Wheels has done an amazing job at taking the foundation of D&D and subverting it into an extremely cool thing. This was all taken into consideration when choosing. That being said, don't be afraid to choose something other than D&D. Pathfinder, Blades in the Dark, Thirsty Sword Lesbians, Call of Cthulhu, I could literally go on and on. There are so many options to bring a story to life and one is going to be perfect for you. We then all discussed the ideas that excited us and we thought that settling on something that we had some experience in would be beneficial to telling the story and that's why it's a journalistic story, because we're journalists. You know? Once that was done, we got some characters drawn up and we made sure they complemented each other and balanced each other out. The veteran reporter, the posh anchor, the moody sleuth, and the fresh-faced intern seemed to be a perfect fit. We wrote up character descriptions and backstories and then we discussed them with Wheels, RDM. We've discussed so much with him and we've got ideas that will span several seasons, so you should stay tuned to see everything we have planned come to fruition. Then once all that was sorted, Wheels took time to come up with the world, the lore, the plot, the NPCs, everything you see in the show. And that's why I've got Wheels here right now to talk about things from a GM's perspective. Oh, hi, Liv. Hi, Wheels. Thank you so much for joining me here today to talk about how you have GM'd Story Breakers for us and how you got Hello. into that. It's me, Wheels, hi, the Wheels. GM of Story Breakers. That's you. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. General manager. Mm. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Wheels, I've got a few questions for you because everyone wants to know how you've done the thing you've done. It's really impressive because Story Breakers is so cool and great. I've heard it's the best D&D show on YouTube, and if they're not watching it, they should watch it now. But I've... please, do answer me your questions, Liv. Of course I will do. What first steps did you take in creating the Story Breakers world? So when I was making the Story Breakers world, I wanted it to be, um, like the, the main uh, goal was to make something different from what we've seen before. Yeah. Uh, and that isn't necessarily to say that I was creating a story that no one had ever told mm -hmm. or, you know, like a setting that no one had ever seen, but I wanted it to stand out from the rest of the actual plays that exist in the world. Yeah. Um, and most of the ones that are close to us, like, you know, for example, Ox Venture and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they have quite standard standard van this. They have quite standard fantasy fare, like mm -hmm. heroes and swords and spells and magic and monsters. The classics, yeah. yeah. And it's all about, you know, an adventurer party going out and, and doing missions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to subvert that uh, in, in at least some way. Yeah. And that's when we, you know, we had a conversation as a, as a group because the main thing is it's not just about the story I want to tell, it's about what we all want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually someone suggested journalists because mm. obviously that's, that's what close we... to home for us because it's what we do. Um, and then that was like, okay, that got the cog spinning. Yeah. I was like, all right, so how do you be a journalist in D&D, &D, right? Mm. Um, and there was like a sort of like, uh, you know, question in my head then of how does that play into this central theme that we've got? So mm -hmm. our characters are people who are not, monster hunters they're not um you know mega wizards Big heroes yeah they're, they're just people who have got a very specific job in this world mm -hmm. and that is to you know investigative journalate mm -hmm. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> the technical <laughs> <is> term <laughs> mm -hmm. um so then it was all about setting up a thing that allowed that to happen yeah and it's like uh it's very unique because i have mentioned in this video that the market is oversaturated for actual play shows and that's something that we knew going into making our own mm. so trying to stand out from that crowd is very helpful to what you're going to do um, yeah the other thing that we had as well which i'm not sure if you've talked about in the video yet mm. already but uh it was kind of 
a given that we we kind of and I, I put this in quotation marks. We kind of had to do D and D, right? Because mm. we wanted to, you know, for selfish reasons, we want to be viewed by as many people as possible. Yeah. The most common and most well-known D and uh, RPG, sorry, is D and D. Yeah. So we're like, okay, it's going to have to be D and D. We play loads of wacky RPGs all the time. Yes. Like it's it's not something that we don't do on the channel already. So mm -hmm. this is our chance to just. Okay, here's D and D. Yeah, here's D and D. It's D and D. We've got two people on the team, including yourself, who are mega fans as well. So, like, you know, it was always in the runnings. But um, especially if you're doing a Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast, you think it's saturated to begin with. Then it's even more so, right? How do you manage to effectively keep the story on track and linear? What is your process for creating the story? So I think um, we we've actually had like a couple of comments of people saying, "Oh, it feels quite linear," mm. uh, which is. isn't isn't true. Just straight up, like we, yeah. yeah so like I have, um, and this will de this will depend on your GM style a lot, I think, because yeah. I'm a very zero prep mm -hmm. uh, games master. I, you can't I'm... tell. <laughs> no, genuinely, you it sounds can't like tell. a dig, but no, yeah, I know, I know it's going to be a compliment. <laughs> no, but yeah, like I don't like having too much planned. Mm. So um, that is definitely something that I had to peel back, mm. knowing that we were making a show, mm. right? So. Um, and I, I think I'm sure this will come up in conversation between us again. But yeah. you know, there's a there's a big difference between GMing a game and GMing a an actual a play show. show. Yeah, yeah because sure. if you want your actual play to just be, look, this is raw. This is just how we play. Mm. Like you know, it's like you're in the living room with us. That's a stylistic choice. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily the only way of doing things. And I think a lot of people will watch stuff like Critical Role and Dimension 20 and think that that's what they're watching. That's the only way to do things, yeah. but that's not true. Yeah. And like a lot of the time, you know, things like Critical Role and stuff like that, I'm sure, I can't tell you because I've worked on them obviously, but like mm -hmm. I'm sure they have behind the scenes discussions and they go, I want to do this. I can be doing my home D&D &D game mm -hmm. and say to Liv, hey, I've got this interesting idea for your character. Do you want to do that? Yeah. And then we can guide you down that path. And then mm -hmm. it might not be known to the rest of the people around the table, which in this case it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got interesting things that we can do. Where it'd be like, okay, here's a goal that we share that we know we're both getting towards. Yeah. And then it's less about, oh God, Liv didn't go into the cafe <laughs> where I have the the sexy the, hunk. Yeah, the, the special <laughs> love interest that I planted there. <laughs> now she'll never meet the sexy hunk. Yeah. Instead, it's more about we both know that that's what's going on. So when Liv hears me go, hmm, there's an interesting orc sort mm -hmm. of sat in the cafe whose rippling muscles are, <laughs> are popping out of their shirt. Bing. Liv's like, okay, that's for me. That's, you know? that's for me, for um, sure. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's, that's for you, girl. But that's the interesting thing of like, mm -hmm. um, that it's not linear. Like it's very mm -hmm. much you guys, you can do whatever you want. We've had discussions about what we all want to do together, mm -hmm. where we see the season going. But, you know, without dropping any spoilers in the video, like there are big, big reveals that you guys had no idea were happening. Um, and Liv was working them out very soon because she's a good detective. Um, but... I'm not Iris's uh, <laughs> absent character, so. For me especially, just keeping like that vague structure of like, I know I want these characters to do this thing. I want by around episode X, I mm -hmm. want this to have happened. I know that this guy's gonna be really important. I know that um, about here is where this big climactic thing should be revealing okay, itself. Cool. So how can I entice my players in that direction, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it sounds similar to the way that I also plan things in my like home games. It's story beats as opposed yeah. to like, uh, this is gonna happen here and I have the script written out yes. kind of thing. That I think is definitely something to avoid. Would you agree? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think yeah. um, that, especially again, if you're a big D and D player, that's kind of like how modules are fed to you, where it's like, here's everything you could possibly want to know. I found that so difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's such a like, whoa, god, and that works perfectly for some people. Mm. Works awful for others, me included. Yeah. Um, so you'll see that like I've got like a Google Doc with like rough. Here's this character, so I can remember their names, all mm. that kind of stuff. Um, I've you know, but everything else was just up here and it mm -hmm. means that i can be fluid there yeah. were things that i planned to do that didn't come to fruition so i, I changed suit and I'm like oh, okay okay you know we never went to certain locations we never um mm -hmm. met certain people Ooh. so it was a case of like all right well if they're not part of this anymore then how does this thing that i'm interested in come in mm -hmm. you know let's say that there's a character that you're really interested in having your people meet mm. um and then they never go to his house or whatever yeah so it's like okay well how does he naturally come, come into, into the, the situation like mm -hmm. how do i reinvent this in my head and if you're reading out of a book that says this man never appears unless <laughs> they go to this thing then it's like Ooh. oh okay yeah. <laughs> it's that thing of like it might be interesting to you 
and your friends mm. to spend five hours sort of, I don't know, conversing over a rule about combat or mm. like, you know, uh, having this kind of meandering, funny chat with an NPC who wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh, but eventually an audience, mm. if that's what you're after, will get bored. So yeah. you have to be really mindful of like, if I was watching this, would I have tuned off by now? You yeah, know? like I, I feel like there's a lot of times with me and you in particular, in particular, especially you, because you're the GM obviously, where you'll be like, okay, and then you go to this to like move people along. Yeah. Uh, and I sometimes do that as a player. I'm like, let's go to this place now because yeah. I know it's been going on for way too long. And yeah. it's like- Sometimes you just have to be your own editor. Yeah. You know, and just exactly. be like, I know that this isn't interesting to any of us. So mm -hmm. let's just, Move it along. No. I think there's a lot of trust as well, like with players and with the GM, because like I know that if I say to you, I want my character to go to this place, you're not going to be like, oh, you can't do that because uh, blah blah blah. This reason. Yeah. Like when I was like, spoilers for Story Breakers, you should watch it. Um, when I was like, I want to take my character to the mall, which is like an interesting place um, that none of us had been to before. I was, I was, I wasn't worried that you would like reject that idea mm -hmm. because. Yeah, I just knew that you would be able to handle that. So. And, and vice versa, you know, by Liv telling me certain aspects of her character that, mm. or like certain arcs she wants to go through, certain things that are important to her to happen in the story, mm. she then trusts me to go, okay, it's time. You yeah. know, I've I've seen a little spot and I can give you like a non-verbal, hey, it's it's happening, yeah. you know? Yeah, and yeah. like, again, depending on the game you're playing, that's rip, you know. It's mm. it's in the in the text of the of the manual, but mm -hmm. um, especially in things like Dungeons and Dragons, where it's very sort of you know it sees itself as like a very open world style game. Mm. That stuff isn't fed to you, so you've got to like invent almost a new toolbox for yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've touched on this briefly, uh, but if you want to expand on it, that would be great. How does GMing for an actual play show differ from G GMing casually? So like, I, I know that we've said a few things on that, but anything else you can. Offer. Yeah, I think, um, again, you know, this is all just sort of advice based on what we do and what we're trying to make. Um, and like I say, if you want your actual play show to just be a raw dump of exactly what you do every time you play at home, mm. like there is absolutely a space for that. Um, but if you're trying to make something a bit more sort of like polished yeah. and edited, um, then there are aspects in which you can play that will allow you to do that before you've even touched Premiere Pro or whatever that mm -hmm. you're using, right? So certain things like, for example, um, you know, uh, having aspects of the story kind of fade into each other a little bit more um, dreamily than you would expect in in a by the numbers sort of RPG session, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So like we were talking about earlier, that sort of like, okay, let's cut forward a couple of hours, all that kind of stuff, mm. which you know, if we're using D&D as an example, it's not necessarily something that the rule book tells you to do, right? Mm. It's not, you know, D&D is seen as very sort of like, we experience it as it happens and we go through. And then we go here and then we yeah, go here. And everything's here. real time, mm -hmm. even to the point where you will simulate travel. Like mm -hmm. if you're playing like Tomb of Annihilation, you've got your bug spray on and stuff like that. that <laughs> you might... love Tomb of Annihilation wheels. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> My favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's very simulation-y, right? It's mm -hmm. like, no, we see everything that happens. And whilst there are sort of safety tools in the general RPG lexicon of like, let's skip that, whatever, mainly there because like you're avoiding things. Mm -hmm. With this, um, we're not avoiding stuff because it's like, I'm worried about that. Mm. It's more like, and obviously we will do that, but it's, it's more about sort of, I know this isn't interesting. Mm. So like, yeah, there's a period here where, um, you know, it, for example, when we were about to go to the town hall meeting, Mm. It's daytime, the town hall meeting is at nighttime, everyone has done all the daytime things they want to do. Yeah. So I could be like, okay, you know, um, you let's do some random stuff for a few have hours. Have some coffee, yeah. write some articles. <laughs> and, we, and we could simulate that, or we could just go, it's nighttime, I can't yeah. click my fingers. It's nighttime, thank you, mm -hmm. done, let's go, <laughs> let's move on. Because I know as well, and again, that's that speaking of earlier of that sort of trust between us and me and the players, mm. it's not just, hey, I'm bored of this, you lot aren't allowed to do this anymore. Yeah. It's more sort of like, we're all done, right? Okay, move on. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, yeah. I, you give uh, everyone an ample opportunity as well to like explore things that they want to do. Like if there's a, like a little bit of, not downtime, but like an intermission between main story beats, like, mm. like, um, in a recent episode, like, yeah, the more situation where uh, Iris and Hunter went to the more and Winona went to get like, um, armor and like bumped into her dad and like stuff like that. Like there's a, like, if people want to do things, they are completely 
yeah. able to do those things. And then, like, this is sort of almost just general RPG advice as well, but, like, let your players GM as much as you do, because, yeah. as a case in point, uh, Liv saying, and this is going to be nothing to you unless you watch the show, but... <laughs> watch the, the show. The more, it was an interesting thing. It was a thing that she wanted to investigate, right? Mm. Um, and I could have just said, uh, whatever, or just told you about it, or something like that. Mm. But then, because Liv said, hey, I want to do this thing, it meant that also it gave her space to have a character moment with one of the other people on the show, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, suddenly, Iris and Hunter are on their own, and they've got this little, like, moment for them to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Mm. Sometimes as well, like, it's not just a case of... Um, creating a, a good like story mm -hmm. it's also you know those elements of like and again i'm speaking of this from like a content production yeah. kind of viewpoint things like knowing when to end an episode in the perfect time so you've got a nice cliffhanger from the next one yeah um knowing uh the best way to speedily get people up on on to with the the catch-ups and things like that mm -hmm. or like uh making sure that there's enough of a sort of chunk of things happening per episode yeah. so it doesn't feel like you've got an exciting episode and then two like fillers, fillers or whatever yeah. you know so there's that balance as well of mm -hmm. like um thinking about your play mm. from an outside perspective yeah which again is uh, and 100 percent you would you just don't do this when you play at home what advice would you give uh to new actual play gms um i think so you know to summarize everything we've talked about right yeah um, treat your game uh, how you want it to come out in the end product. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's a lot harder once you've done the recording to make the thing shape to how you want it, mm -hmm. right? So whenever you've got like a session in front of you and you think in your head, okay, I want this to be like a, a, a sort of soap opera drama mm -hmm. or... I want this to, to be like a procedural crime thing or mm -hmm. I want this to be like a light-hearted buddy comedy. Mm -hmm. If you try and manifest that after you've started playing, you've run out of that opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to go in with that mindset, set that tone early on, talk yeah. to your players. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to achieve. Have that all perfectly planned out from the start because if you figure it out four episodes down the line, mm -hmm. you've lost all the people you were trying to hit. Yeah. Because they've, they've tuned out. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So basically just kind of have a strong theme in mind, a strong idea in mind, and then just try your best to kind of stick to that. Yeah, know the show that you're trying to make. Mm. And again, if the show you're trying to make is literally, here's us playing, like, you know, ask yourself who this thing that you're making is for. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael Whelan. <laughs> Watch Story Breakers. Watch YouTube.com forward slash Dice Breaker. Mm -hmm. And soon to be an audio podcast. Thanks, Wheels. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight if you're a burgeoning actual play GM. While Wheels was putting together a story, myself and the other players were commissioning character art from the wonderful Polysifema Vera, Twitter link in the description, who took all that we had in mind for our characters and simply transcended these ideas and made them perfect. Look at all the notes in Hunter's shell, look at Cariaris's dress, look at Winona's little lizard guy worm, and look at my baby! Look at her! Side note here. Always pay your artists. I know, I know, another expense, but artists deserve it. Even if it's your friend doing the art, please just pay them. After all of that, there was a discussion of where we were going to film and how. We looked at a lot of options, but they had to fit into our budget, which isn't as big as you might think. We toyed with using spaces in our office, which weren't designed for filming, and so simply didn't work. We even had an extremely disappointing day in which we put up curtains, set up lights and cameras and after all the work we did, we realized it just didn't work. So everything came down and we had to return to the drawing board. We were thinking of entering to a few venues in Brighton which might have worked for us, but they were very difficult to move a bunch of equipment to and they were still slightly out of budget. We thought we were going to go with a lovely space in a local board game cafe, but it just wasn't right for us. We even did a session zero there, which honestly wasn't great. <laughs> so we packed up and moved on out. Now, how we solve this problem may be something you've been asking yourself this whole time. Liv, why not just use your studio that you film videos in? Well, the size of the studio is dinky, minuscule, positively hooey. So we ruled it out pretty quickly. But then, Maddie and I realized something. In Storybreakers, our characters have literally been shoved into a terrible office space to hide from the rest of the company they work for. With that being the case, we started leaning into the terrible. The set is cramped, beige and unremarkable, because that's the situation the characters are in. 
It all made sense. And so we made do with what we had and made it work. I know a lot of people don't have access to a studio, small or not. And that's why if you want to play in person, I want to let you know that location will be your biggest obstacle. You can look into hiring a studio for sessions, but that's a lot of money, of course. <laughs> However, I've also been involved in an actual play where we were sat around a kitchen table with webcams pointed at us and we made it work. You can do it. I believe in you. No, I do though, I'm not joking. We post Story Breakers to YouTube at 6 p.m. GMT on Fridays, and we're also converting it into a podcast to listen to on the go. We may even be doing our first Story Breakers live show very, very soon. And that's how you can make your very own actual play show, just like us, mostly like us. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Now that you know how we make it, why not actually check out Story Breakers on the channel? A new episode should have just gone out and the show is great. It's Hot Fuzz meets D&D, &D. what more could you want? For more from us at Dicebreaker, you can like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tabletop videos from us. Head on over to dicebreaker.com for more on TTRPGs, board games, miniatures games, card games and more. You can also sign up to our membership system over there on dicebreaker.com forward slash subscribe to get money off on tickets for shows like MCM Comic Con and PAX Unplugged, money off of our merch, as well as an actual free board game for annual subscribers. A, a, a board game. <laughs> but most importantly, have a lovely day.